Okay, let's go back to game one actually, because this seems deeply fascinating. Um, there's two questions I have, and an intuitive thing I notice about Houdini. It seems to be faster on depth searching. I think uh, some speculation, if it if um, is is that uh, it's been oriented towards very fast depth searching, which. For me, I don't know, within the chess-based software, it doesn't seem that uh, stable as, as the free engines go. With the UCI interface, you can put any engines you want within the chess-based client software. Uh, but sometimes it seems to really hog the machine. But it's achieving f much faster depths than Ripka. But is that because of Ripka's breadth search? Um, and is this the real cause of the Houdini-type acts that with engines equipped with very fast depth searches, maybe they can do amazing positional sacrifices. Um, and in terms of positional sacrifices and gambits, you know what is happening there? Um, I'm, I'm wondering, is, is one major aspect to make the opponent's pieces look like spectators? When you play a gambit and you get a big initiative, you get a big uh, quality difference of your pieces to the opponent's pieces. So either they're quicker out of the box, you know, faster development tempi, um, or they're in, in the center, they're more flexible. Um, this qualitative difference, which can be used later for a king attack or something, can be translated into something concrete before it evaporates. But this qualitative difference is really uh, vividly shown in this game. So Houdini Black in the first game uh, against Ribka 4. So C3 Sicilian. And um, okay, so Knight F6, Nimzovich variation provoking white forward. So Knight D5. Again, we have this, this, this pattern like the other game. You know, does white really want to put the pawns on the dark squares to allow uh, restraint on the light squares? Positional theme recurring. Uh, so Knight F3, Knight C6. But this is standard theory uh, so far. Now this bishop b3 c4. Um, now initially, okay, you might think, oh, this this is nice to gain a tempo here to attack the bishop, but it's at a big cost. It's releasing some of the central tension. So how will black fight back against the white central control? Well, there's a radical thing that occurs very very shortly now after queen c7, uh, queen e2. I don't know if this is theory or not. Maybe it is, I should check it out. But it does a couple of things. It looks like one of my moves in the Blitz game, G5, G4, that I play in the French defense. It gives G7 as a place for the bishop to further attack the pawn. So it seems to have quite a bit of logic on it, uh, behind it. Um, but now we see um, a pawn sack uh, from Rubka E6. So this game is starting to be a bit crazy. Okay. Um, well, the point is, it's disrupting um, black's pawns, giving black a double pawn in the center, and white's then going to be able to play knight g5 without actually losing the e5 pawn to a capture, rather just giving it first to be able to take on g5. And the point of that is, you know, h7 is weak, maybe the king side is vulnerable, these, these, these pawns are still vulnerable. Okay, so d takes e6, knight takes g5, so actually we're equal on material so far, but there's a vulnerable h7 pawn. Is this really a basis for a deep? deep positional sacrifice to make white's pieces look like spectators. I mean, so already we're in a kind of gambit territory now um, of the queen e5 because the h7 pawn's been offered to destabilize maybe the white pieces, get them away from the center, you achieve a qualitative difference after the queens get exchanged, knight takes h7, bishop g7, there's a big qualitative difference between white's pieces and black's pieces with black having uh, still pressure on d3. Uh, which might be used to, to further uh, clamp white, white's pieces down, which is still kind of in, inside the box at the moment. Okay, so d4, and then we see black uh, willingly trading queens, and now striking just at the center, striking for quality pieces to make white's pieces look like spectators. Still this h7 pawn in the offering though, so surely it can be taken. Well, it is taken, so we're now in gambit territory. Black has gambit to the pawn, trying to get this extra increase this boost in quality. Is it because of this huge depth search? It's going to do a Houdini bit of trickery here that actually this uh, decentralizing gobbling act of knight takes h7 is going to be um, severely punished soon. Well, bishop g7 looks as though uh, 
you know this bishop's nice on this diagonal c3 might be a potential target there might be knight a4s later when the bishop's not eyeing a4 it looks as though black's pieces are easy, easily coordinating here is this just reckless play or is it just making the opponent's pieces uh, look like spectators well knight g5 the knight hovels back hovers back Okay, bishop d7. This bishop is going to strike through the center as well. So, qualitatively, these bishops striking through the center is an impressive thing. The knights are also looking pretty dangerous here. There's potential for a rook to come to the center soon, and the king likes a target for further tempo gains. So, the gambit, I don't know, looks to have some compensation at the moment, especially after this move, knight a3, drunken knight move. Uh, but knight d2, I guess, probably is, is horribly um, tactically punished. Uh, knight f3 doesn't even have c2 at the moment to, to go back to to get to the center. If we just quickly check out that move, actually, it's difficult probably for white to play natural moves already. Um, so knight d2, I guess, there's a tactical punishment. I'll just rook d8. Okay, it's about equal. Let's, let's turn. Let's leave that on for a bit. Okay, so knight a3. The evaluation here is in white's favor at a certain depth depth nine okay can we really have a cheeky engine looking far ahead to play a human type positional sacrifice stroke gambit are, are we are we going uh we're first proving with computers in the last few years that chess is becoming a more and more clinical game and you can't do gambits but now you know what what if there are these this possibility this possibility of depth oriented engines proving that actually controlled reckless play is the way to go because you get this qualitative difference which there is this specific moment of exploitation which can occur and it can all be justified later is that really the case that we're going to actually be start to be taught dynamism we're going to go into a, a sort of romantic new engine era i don't know what to call that uh, the post engine era is is a return to the romantic era um if this is the case then this would be the follow up if if i got to that point in the evolution of style because uh, here you know houdini is sacrificing pawns like it's a madman uh you know it's like it's it's been studying uh, my blitz games on the icc or something so um and it's even playing g5 you know the patents in g5 you know what's going on here it's getting the bishops are striking through the center and white's knights are hovering around like that classic uh karpov kasparov uh, gambit game with this knight a3 and the knights hovering around so this knight's uh been munching on h7 and trying to return back to the center and this knight's on a3 and, and the, the drunken knights against uh, centralized bishops and rooks blasting down uh, potential uh, useful roads here um so it's interesting so knight d3, another um, offering is given. So is, is black really saying to white, I'm going to make your pieces uh, look like uh, spectators here. I'm going for massive uh, piece quality. So another pawn is bunched. CD, rook, king takes d3. How do we assess the compensation here? Um, we, can see, we can tell the energy force of the black pieces, they're coordinated uh you, you know on the diagonal with knight a4s there's bishops that can strike to the center there's rooks that can infiltrate on on the files um so black's possibilities are huge but black is two pawns down haven't we been taught to play more solidly when playing against engines and you know we're all curling up in these solid defenses like the slav how can we play dynamically like this and to see an engine play uh, this dynamic thing get away with it, it seems to be an incredible um, concept. So knight a4, this is like an April Fool's joke, which um, I think Chessbase once had about an engine playing um, all these gambits. You know, they programmed to play like this, and this was this is the new killer engine or something. So f3, I don't know. Could the knight have just retreated back to f3? Would, would that have been terrible with knight f3? Do, do we get a demo of, of black's activity? We do. Bishop f5. King's getting kicked about as well in the center. It's not particularly great to have that as a target. Rook d8. You can have some vicious coordination now. 
so another night retreat might be forced um because uh, i guess this bishop g4 after rook d1 takes bishop g4 is going to be painful so okay so white's getting a bit twisted here uh, maybe so f3 is this is this part of a major consolidation or is black going to be able to use the temporary uh, quality difference which has been generated by by being two pawns down here so a5 knight e4 centralizing consolidating question mark is it f5 knight f2 and now b5 so immediate frets maybe b4 puncturing c3 there's unpleasant pressure on c3 the king looks unpleasantly in the center but do we you know we don't, we don't trust our, our our visual appearance of the position surely i mean surely white can, can consolidate here because uh really this this relationship between um uh, material time and, and and quality is um is is highly controversial okay so knight c2 b4 I mean, this this kind of break you sometimes get in in Sicilian Shvetsnikovs uh, with 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 C file pressure and and a B4 break, but uh, it is extending the scope of Black's pieces. After C takes B4, so three pawns down now, three pawns down. What has happened here to prompt this third pawn sack? And now, in fact, my Ribka is only giving this as 0 0.15 to white and declining, declining. So it's giving moves like rook a6 or ab4 now. But actually this cheeky move, king f7, is played. King f7. Okay, it gives more possibilities now. Like the rook coming to either c8 or b8 or d8. So it takes, so temporarily, <laughs> four pawns up. Three pawns up now, recapture. Okay, so king d2. And now all of a sudden, bang, black looks better according to to my rook put after king d2 so in this position black's already better the king's safety issue seems all of a sudden to have been exposed as though the white king is in trouble and this looks like the point of gambit in the romantic era is the major point Okay, as well as those three points mentioned yesterday about the soundness of gambits, which were basically, if your gambits provide compensation in three broad areas, um, uh, one of them quality difference um, of, of the pieces, another one, you know, if you can do structural damage. Um, okay, and, you know, another one like time. Uh, but here, I mean, white's pieces do look like spectators, but you need an accurate precision uh for the consolidation effort not to take hold so there's a window of opportunity which is quite small here but after king d2 um we we see now um there's ways uh, to proceed here but uh in fact there's more than one way knight takes b2 or rook d8 seems strong according to my report so rook d8's chosen the king's just in the center you know um I mean, Morph Morphe in, in, in the Romantic era made, made his opponent's pieces look like spectators sometimes. He would sacrifice, and then later we thought that was all unsound. There were better white defences. But, um, you know, this is a vicious gambit, this game, as black against the C3 Sicilian. Uh, you know, is this going to be influencing um, Grandmaster's uh, play in this opening as black? against the c3 Sicilian to play this g5 to offer h7 to play later on the queen side for b4 i mean i don't know this this looks remarkable stuff so now uh finally it looks as though black's gonna just be content to go one pawn down or would that be seen as part of uh consolidation effort for white to offer that b2 pawn well in fact it's not taken in fact we have this rook central centralizing move rook e5 with black's advantage going up even more that the, the pressure is is maximized i suppose which i think increases that window of exploitation opportunity that instead of gobbling until to still be material down to just maximize the dynamism first uh for the for the punishment to be more marked actually than just 
simply regaining material. The valuation is just going up and up here for black in black's favour. It's now minus 1.59 and going up and up. So, blimey, I mean, I just, this is an unbelievable game. This does seem like a Houdini act to see this, this type of game between two engines. So, Rook FD3, sorry, Knight from F to D3, so centralising the Knight, fine. But it's it's going into a vicious pin with Bishop B5. And now Knight C5, torture that pin on D3. Black's found a very strong focal point for all the pieces here. And do the extra pawns help White? No, no, they're just, they're just, you know, the, the pieces, they're spectators. That's the key thing. The pieces are seen as spectators and, and, and the poor helpless king in the center. I, rem I remember um, a Barnet Chess Club away match where you used to have a really strong to J Jeremy um, Sharp and I remember in a C3 Sicilian game, he also uh, sacrificed this pawn, castled queenside, and had a brilliant attack. And I thought it was a beautiful game. And it sort of reminds me of this, you know, this is kind of, but a computer doing it. This dynamism which is possible in chess is, is really, um, does make chess a, a, a completely magical game that all our rules can be totally thrown out about this, this um, idea of material. Um, if if you can play precisely enough and and not uh, be willing to pursue uh, your pressure to increase your pressure, um, but here now there's 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 concrete punishment which is uh, helping restore material balance, so winning that exchange. And now bishop f6, and now you know black is just a bishop up. He's got material now to justify um, being three pawns down. It's got a bishop for it. It's got a bishop for it. So now rook c8. Uh, are these pawns going anywhere? No, they're going to probably be blocks or, or black's going for the king still. Well, rook c2 because if a6 just takes because this bishop's tied down. Look, that poor bishop, that poor dark square bishop is an example of, the, of a spectator in this game. Now we see bishop e4. This bishop can conveniently eye the queening square. And also gobble. Uh, so black's really regained the material with advantage. Uh, so have we just witnessed another Houdini act in this game? Um, it's remarkable dynamism. Um, could we be entering a new uh, part of chess, the kind of engine romantic era, where engines are playing seemingly reckless openings but the end result is making the opponent's pieces look like spectators, finding uh, that initiative to, to, to undermine king safety, uh, and then later the, the the right window of opportunity to, to restore the material uh, balance uh, with advantage, with massive advantage here, white resign here, minus 4.73. I don't know what to say, this is just ridiculous, isn't it? Um, so we have here the line which I think I might have played this myself, this idea G5, actually, in, in a 30 minute game a while back. But uh, so this just justifies that the idea is good. Centralize all your pieces. Don't worry about losing pawns. That's the lesson to be learned. Just maximize the opponent's pieces looking like spectators. And don't be too quick to restore material balance. Make sure your window of exploitation opportunity is, is perfect by, by maximizing the pressure. No need to rush to take on B2. And then uh, when you finally carry out uh, a material execution conversion back, uh, it will be with, with enough advantage to, to win the game here. So winning the exchange, being a bishop up now, these pawns are still useless in terms of queening. And, um, and that's it, you know, consolidation effort here for black, uh, being a bishop up. So white resigns here. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.